Okay, you're live. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's Bill Thornton. I'm the superintendent of schools here in Warwick. We welcome you to the Pilgrim Zoom meeting on the business learning plan for the start of the school year. Um, our format is a brief presentation to cover the uh, various areas of the DL and Pilgrim. All by which we will have questions that you can submit as you're watching on YouTube. Down below, you'll see a link. If you hit the link, you can type in your question, and we'll get to it in this uh, meeting today. So without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Mr. Havisher and his team for the brief presentation. Well, I'd like to welcome the Pilgrim community to the start of the 2020-21 school year at Pilgrim High School. Uh, we once again will start virtual learning as we ended last year. Um, First, uh, we have important dates coming up. We need to get students their books and materials. So that will start tomorrow with the ninth grade. I've sent all this information to the community already via email. So you should have uh, this material. Uh, if you do not, we have it here in our PowerPoint. But tomorrow the ninth grade will come in uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, A to C from 8 to 8.30, D to G from 8.30 to 9, H to M from 9 to 9.30, N to R from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and S to Z from 10 o'clock to 10.30. Uh, the grade 10 will come on Wednesday, September 9th, grade 11, Thursday, September 10th, and grade 12 will come Friday, September 11th. Chromebook repair procedures, that, again, this information has gone out to the community as well. Uh, we have procedures in place for your child to return their Chromebook should it need repair. Uh, and it's Tuesdays and Wednesdays between 8 and 10.30 at Pilgrim High School. Uh, please look for the email that was sent out to students uh, in regards to this. Uh, it's also going out in future communications uh, with parents. September 14th will be our first day of school. This will be virtual, uh, of course, and, and teachers will be contacting students in some way, shape, or form about how they are going to meet uh, on that day. We're going to run all seven periods, uh, starting at 724 with period one and ending, on, uh, ending at 151 with period seven. We want our teachers to meet and greet their students. Uh, and give their classroom uh, expectations. This is a copy of our virtual learning schedule. It's going to be different from what we we do in-person learning. Uh, the thinking was that we felt last year there was uh, too much piling on of work to students. We kind of want to spread things out a little bit, you know, give three periods a day, and give time for students to do their work, but. We also are pushing our teachers to increase instruction virtually uh, and decrease the piling on of work. Hold closer to the mic if you could. Please. Thank you. So this is our virtual learning schedule. Again, this will all be coming out uh, in the mail and through emails and through communications to our community. We have Google Meet expectations that we will also share with you. Uh, students should get up early, have a good breakfast, get on their computer and be ready to go. They should be dressed. Uh, they, they should follow the proper protocols that the teachers ask. Uh, and most importantly, they should be there when we have Google Meets. Uh, last year, we were a little bit uh, lax as far as requiring students to be in the Google Meets, but this year, that is not the case. If a student is not in the Google Meets, they will be mocked absent for that period. We will always have social emotional supports for our students, our school psychologists, our social workers, our counselors, our student assistant counselors are also available. Uh, the Pilgrim Administration is here today as well. We are always available to answer any concern that you may have. Again, email is the best way to contact us uh, at this moment. I have uh, Dr. Sheree Guerra with me. She's our teaching and learning assistant principal at Pilgrim. Ms. Pam Bernardi is our uh, assistant principal for climate and culture. And Mr. Bruce Fairbanks is our assistant principal for climate and culture. One, one thing that we talked about doing during this virtual learning time is last year we had some students who really kind of checked out. Um, so if we see that happening, we might be knocking on doors 
uh, to see what's going on with, with your student if they just kind of gave up. So uh, we're going to come out there and try and help as best we can. But we need kids to check into their, their computers, check in with their teachers, and not check out. Again, information will be continuous and forthcoming during the virtual learning process, as it always is. I use ConnectEd on a regular basis. There'll be a message coming out soon with much of this stuff in there regarding the opening of school. We have um, information being mailed out to families uh, this week, uh, and everything in that packet will be helpful for you as we start the school year. But again, if there's any questions, concerns, uh, you can always contact myself or my administration. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we've, uh, we've got a couple of questions that have rolled in. A few about technology, so I'll jump in. This is Jeff Taylor, Director of Technology. Um, and uh, just an overview, as you know, uh, or, or may know, especially you may not know if you're new to Pilgrim, is that we are one-to-one -one in grades six through 12. So that means every student at Pilgrim grades nine through 12 should have a Chromebook device. If they don't have a Chromebook device, you're new to the school, uh, you can reach out to the school and our technician and our tech integration specialists work together to make sure that you have a device in your hands for uh, distance learning. Uh, if you have a device already and there's a, it's broken, it needs repairs, a question specifically popped up, I need a charger. Um, again, you can reach out to the school, the technician, and they can facilitate that process for you and get that device up and running again back into your hands. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, question that did pop up, uh, I know you mentioned um, the supply distribution. If, it's, if they can't make their day, a ninth grader can't make their ninth grade day, can they come a different day? Yeah, um, they can come on any other one of, of the other days that's available um, at any time during that time period between 8 and 10.30. Excellent. And um, a question about um, summer math or summer work. Uh, can they still do their summer work and how is that handled and how do they turn that in eventually when uh, that's all done? They would work that out with their individual math teacher or English teacher, depending on what subject area uh, that, that is in. And a uh, question about um, uh, students, uh, special education students, I believe um, this comes on with us. And uh, is there going to be, if, if there are students at Pilgrim, that uh, currently are uh, slated to go and uh, uh, full uh, in person at vets because they're in uh, those groups designated for that. Uh, is there a meeting for those parents and those students virtually? How are they going to get some more information on that? Um, I just met with the teachers that there today, and they will be reaching out to parents next week um, and set up some uh, time for them to come in and visit and uh, meet their teacher and. Um, learn the schedule. Thank you. Um, another technology question popped up. Uh, we have our own device. Do we need a Chromebook? Uh, the, the short answer is yes. Please make sure that you go and, and pick up that Chromebook because it's through our Chromebooks and our Chromebook management system that we're able to push out the apps that the kids need access to. Um, our single sign-on through Clever so that kids can uh, access all the programs that they need. Uh, can they use another device as well at home if there's other devices that they're comfortable with? Sure, um, but you definitely want the, the access that the Chromebook provides, uh, so that way you're not short at anything there. Um, and another question about uh, can 10th graders pick up on the 9th uh, instead? Yep. And uh, after school programs, clubs, activities, uh, is there any plan for virtual, the extra stuff? Well, as far as I know, the Appendix B, I, I think all new Appendix B are, are not being brought back. So I'm not sure uh, what can and can't be done with the after school activities. Because that's an Appendix B issue. Yeah, I think right now we are not looking at running uh, clubs. That could certainly change as we move forward. Right now, things like sports and Appendix B are being uh, discussed. But as of today, we're not running that. And, uh, and Dr. Thornton, kind of heading back to you, is there a, um, what's the district's process for planning to eventually move from 
virtual learning to back in person in school? What are you looking at and how are you assessing? Sure, first, our thought process to start the year was to look at what we could open safely, and we believe it was those three locations, Veterans, the Korean Tech, and the Drum Rock School. From that, we are looking you know, to find ways to have you know, realistic, permanent solutions to safely open schools. Our next step in the process is we do have inspections Friday morning in the district, tomorrow morning. We have four teams coming here from the state uh, to uh, go over our buildings. We do have some thoughts we want to share with them, realistic thoughts, I believe, that could uh, hopefully make some progress. Um, I would say, you know, across Rhode Island, buildings have, uh, you know, have had decades of um, just, uh, you know, not being kept up. There are a lot of bond questions now in Rhode Island on the ballot in November to, to really address this issue. Warwick has a bond for $56 million. A lot of that is around HVAC and electrical. So short answer, uh, we're looking at it daily. We had a team meeting this morning. We have inspections tomorrow morning. We talked to school committee on September 8th on next steps, and we go from there. But if anyone has any questions um, on the buildings or you know what we're looking at, please give me a call. Uh, cell phone, 401-680-2381. Okay, heading back to uh, Ms. Cobb. Ms. Cobb, uh, a couple questions popping up about students with 504s, uh, and then also a couple questions about students with IEPs. What can those families expect for services being met for students with 504s and IEPs um, during virtual learning? And if they have any questions about those services being met or any suggestions about additional services, what's that whole process look like? So um, accommodations from 504 plans and IEPs will be followed. Um, the, uh, this year's current case managers do receive copies of the students' IEPs and um, work with each student to make sure that the goals and objectives in those IEPs uh, will be met. Um, the 504 plans, uh, they should be reviewed every year, and um, that, that can go through the guidance office at um, – at Pilgrim and any special education questions can be uh, directed through Steve Carter, the de uh, special education department chair there at Pilgrim and if um, to get the process started or if they have any questions um, regarding specific um, plans or testing or anything like that for special education. Thank you. Um, a good question here specifically to high school students is SAT testing. What have we heard, what do we know? Uh, about the SATs? Uh, the SATs are scheduled for October 14th. We are meeting as a district um, to determine our capacity for um, if at all, if we can house uh, in-person SAT testing. So there is no official word at this point, but statewide uh, it is uh, October 14th. And, and people can sign up for to take SATs on their own. Uh, as well as the in-school SAT. And um, as far as teachers, will they be teaching from their classrooms? Will they be teaching from home? What can parents expect from the setting that teachers will be? Teachers have the option to either work in the classroom or work at home. Some are going to work at home, some are going to work in the classroom. Uh, especially science teachers, if they want to demonstrate a lab, uh, they might feel more comfortable doing that in an actual lab instead of their kitchen. So uh, it, it's going to be a little bit of both. And um, I know you had a slide up there about the schedule for the day, but what's, what, how many hours a day specifically would kids expect to be online versus not online? Are teachers going to be required for the Zoom? And, and I know we talked a little bit about expectations, but just from a kid's perspective, what can they expect and how is that going to feel, um, what their day is going to look like? So in the Google Meets part of the schedule, it's either three or four hours a day, probably less uh, meeting with the teacher, um, depending on how much work they also get on top of that, uh, you know, could be another hour or so after that. Uh, office hours are basically where the student and the teacher can interact on, on any issues the student may be having uh, with the class. So, and that is depending on, on whether the, the student needs help. So I, I, I would ballpark figure, you know, three to four hours a day, three for classwork, maybe an hour for, for schoolwork. Would you agree with that? Yeah, there'll be less than three hours of virtual time face-to-face -face through Google Meets. 
based on the schedule that will be sent out and on the slideshow. The students will probably have a total of four hours of work outside of the Google Meets in the course of the week per course. And if, uh, if students need extra help, additional help, um, what's the process best to engage teachers to get some additional support and some help with their work? Uh, much like saying after school would have been. The student? Yes. Yeah, well, the student has office hours with, with the teacher that's built into the schedule. That's for that's for extra help as well. Uh, and then we still have the pop at nights. But students can email, contact their teachers at any time via email uh, should they struggle with, with, with any anything in the classroom. I think teachers are willing to meet and, and help kids at, at any time. And just a follow up to an earlier point, um, and they're, they're just asking, so is the expectation that all teachers are going to actually be doing lessons every day via um, Google Meets or, or some kind of live interaction rather than the just assignment of work. That's what we uh, 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 emphasize, uh, more instruction and less piling on of, of work. And last year was a new experience for everyone. I think in an emergency situation, we, we did a pretty good job, but we're trying to build on that and learn from that and improve on that. Uh, and, and that's the plan moving forward. Can I add to that? Yep. So in addition, bouncing off of what Mr. Habershaw said, students will meet again twice per week per class with Google Meets. So twice per week uh, will be face-to-face -face time, in other words. Those Google Meets with teachers will be instructional, they'll be engaging, they'll be interactive time. In those other hours, uh, there will be what's kind of called anytime learning. Students can do classwork on, at their own pace during those days. Uh, teachers will give a heads up as to what kinds of assignments there are. And so the two days a week will be face to face, uh, one specific time frame for the Google Meets. But then there'll be other types of work for students to do on their own. And Dr. Guerra, can I just add in, we also, you know, while you mentioned it's really difficult to talk about learning opportunities without really um, giving a specific time, because we know that it's really important for students to really engage deeply with the text and spend time reading. Um, and so, therefore, the expectations could really range. And for high school students to have, um, you know, about per, per week per class, about six to seven hours, including additional time for reading. Um, and again, for those students who are in our EEP and AP classes, um, they would be continuing on with the traditional expectations. So it would be broken into three different learning opportunities, as Dr. Guerra said. And we had a question about um, this presentation, so that's a great question. We have, um, as you're watching this now, you're viewing it through a YouTube link. The reason for that is it's recorded. It lives at that YouTube link after this presentation is over. You can go back, rewatch the slides, view the slides again. You'll hear us all again with the same Q&A. Uh, so if, there's, if you need to share that out to other people or you want to view it again, you have that link and that will be live um, after we're done here today. Um, the question, uh, again, really germane to high school is senior projects. Uh, how are senior projects going to look? Will there still be early presentation for senior projects in December? Is that in person, virtual? Is there any thinking on that yet? Well, the original plan is to continue with uh, all of that, but uh, we're not sure we'll be in person in December. So uh, it's all dependent on how things go from, from here. There's still senior project. There's been quite a, a bit of information sent out by our senior project coordinator to students and faculty. And we'll continue to send out that information. We'll, we continue to go forward with senior project. And Dr. Durham, so I'd like to add a little bit more information there. So uh, Mr. Havershaw is correct in that a ton of information has already gone out to parents and students on it. It is renamed the Capstone Project. So please, we highly encourage you to find emails from Mrs. Cranston to find her videos in addition to her helpful links on the new guidebooks with information as there are uh, really some important changes to note for, for students because we know in person at the moment is not going to happen. We do not have like for 15 hours of um, mentor time as part of our requirements. So please take a look at those documents through the emails that you've received. 
and um, schedule changes, if they're looking at a schedule and there's any concerns or questions about a schedule, what's the process to get some help there? They should email the guidance counselor. Uh, the guidance counselors are in the building, uh, who can be in the building. <laughs> so uh, they can email the counselor and it can be handled via email. Uh, we have had kids come in as well by appointment. And um, some special uh, types of courses. Uh, one question about uh, your studio program. Um, is that going to function? And how does that work, especially if the student's a senior and they're working towards, they mentioned a certificate of graduation, uh, how will they have access to that? Will they have access? Is that, that program is still running and still functioning. Um, it's being done virtually. I don't know if Dr. Guerrero wants to add more to that. As right now, it's still good planning to be virtual um, and try to provide as much support as we can to students through this process with virtual learning to try to achieve work-based learning. Um, I think this one's still something we need a little more work on. We do have some videos that the Studio 107 kids produced uh, this past week. Uh, I'll, I'll be sending out some videos to the community um, as well as to the faculty. So some of the kids have been actually working already. <laughs> and then um, along that same line, um, robotics programs, house wiring classes. Um, how do you view that being virtual versus live and in person? Because sometimes those are just so hands on. Yes, and that's been a difficult part for the teachers, uh, but they've been doing a good job. A lot of them have been recording themselves, um, teaching and building things and showing kids how things work and having kids kind of do things on their own as much as they can, depending on what they have. Um, so that is uh, that is difficult, but the teachers are really working to try and, and make that better. And then just as you were answering that, somebody popped on too with a biotech uh, pathway, and so I'd imagine it's the yep. same. It's still be, going to be done virtually. We have outstanding teacher running that program. So um, hopefully at some point we do get back in person, but uh, the teachers are doing a good job to, to make the best of, of the situation. And. Um, What's the uh, communication look like? So if, if parents, if the, if the students are not accessing the Google Meets on a regular basis and they're not doing their, their end of the, of the learning, how do parents know that? What is the, how do parents get in the know so they can help you help them? All right, so we, we, we've created a communication process where the kids not tuning into their work. Uh, the teachers, we've asked the teachers to contact parents um, and then if it continues, we'll talk to the guidance counselors. If you have guidance counselors, contact parents. The administration will contact families. Or we'll come knocking on your door to try and see what, what's going on. So uh, we've created, a, 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 hopefully, a solid communication system for kids who are not uh, doing what they need to do and not tuning in on a regular basis. And um, along the lines of some, some extra things, is National Honor Society still something that people should be working towards and concerned about? Yes, continue to work towards it because it still exists and uh, we will be honoring National Honor Society students. And as far as like a music class, um, how will the concert chorus work this year? Uh, how, what does that look like? You've been working a lot with them, right? There. We hope to have access to a program that will allow students to record and better record and hear um, each other with the chorus performing. It is something that we're still working on because uh, we're just going to get access to a particular program and teachers uh, to actually be able to implement it with the students. So. The goal is to make sure that students are still working together in some capacity to produce a uh, good effort for the chorus and also for the band. And a question about food service popped up. Um, uh, so lunches and uh, uh, while people are virtually learning, what's their access going to be to lunches? Will they still have uh, an opportunity there? Yes, this is Tony Farooch, I'm the finance director for the School of Farming. And uh, we will be running the lunches similar to what we did last year. They will be grabbing those. Uh, Pilgrim High School is one of the sites in which we'll be distributing lunches. Um, under the new federal regulations that just came out, all lunches will be free uh, for all students from now, beginning of school until December 31st, 2020. We will be getting more information out uh, shortly and connect that type of messaging. 
And um, a question popped up, Dr. Thorne, that you answered a little bit earlier, but uh, I think some folks might just be signing on, is uh, what kind of things are we doing to really work to get kids back into school? Yep. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're um, working with our team, working with the state. We have inspections uh, scheduled tomorrow with our four inspection teams covering our 19 buildings. Um, to me, it has to be you know something I can recommend to the school committee that is uh, safe to bring back all persons to the district. So we are looking at at, at different different um, models right now. What has been recommended, in my opinion, is not a sustainable, safe solution. Box fans in a hallway in a window is not a solution. So uh, I am looking at solutions, and we meet with the committee on the eighth of September to discuss the next steps. And uh, once again, meeting on the fourteenth of September. And we've got a technology question that popped up. Um, again, we'll, uh, just to reiterate something, uh, is that students from uh, in all grades 9 through 12 uh, will receive a Chromebook. Um, the question is, will they receive a new Chromebook? Uh, we are working right now to uh, gather or purchase enough devices to go one-to-one -one in grades K through 12, uh, which means that there will be, when that happens and where we get into the pipeline for that, there'll be a redistribution of devices at different grade levels. So for now, um, students have a Chromebook, we realize that may be a few years old. And um, so that's still the case as we sit here today. But as we acquire these devices, uh, hopefully in the next few months, when we do a redistribution, we'll take a look again at, um, at what grades will receive new Chromebooks, not just this year, but then try to make that commitment for following years moving forward so that we're always looking to uh, replace our fleet of devices uh, when they're ready to be replaced. Um, question here about the sale program. Um, does the sale program count as a grade and what is the sale program? What's the sale program? The sale program was an opportunity that Ryan offered uh, this summer for to support students um, in the in because of distance learning, we had actually we had a teach, several teachers in our district that have been teaching through the sale program for ride. Um, but that is not a grade for um, that that was not organized by work public school and wouldn't be a grade in our system. It was really about um, really a launch over the summer to support students um, strong as they enter into the school year. So I know that even our ninth um, our ninth and twelfth graders were our rising ninth and twelfth graders were offered. Um, actually a uh, payment for their work into the sale program this summer. So that was something that Ride organized and many of our students as well as our educators in Warwick participated in. So that's great. And a, um, another Chromebook question, um, and it has to do with kindergarten students. So I imagine that the person asking has a student both at Pilgrim and in kindergarten. Um, the devices that we are uh, moving towards for kindergarten students, again, um, anywhere you look, Chromebooks are going to be um, uh, delayed for a couple months, but the uh, Chromebook devices that uh, are most appropriate for kindergarten students are touchscreen devices. And so specifically when we distribute those devices to kindergarten students, we're looking at those touchscreen devices. So that way that's the best device to help them with their learning. Um, and uh, our Chromebook's going to be one per family or one per student. Um, right now we're just asking that families work with us and, and we are working to meet whatever your needs are, right? So if you have devices at home and, and can help us out with that, and again, I'm, I'm answering it as though you have an elementary student and a high school student. Anybody six through 12 have one device per student, but if you have devices in the home for your elementary student and, and they are able to use those at least for the next, uh, hopefully short time until we go one-to-one, -one, that will help us ensure that everybody that needs a device gets one. But certainly if you need a device, reach out to your local elementary school and uh, they'll work with their technician and get a device in your hands as we work to try to meet as many needs as possible out in the community. And uh, the question here is, will there be fall sports? So um, being on the interscholastic league board, we've just moved this fall sports season to September 21st. We're waiting to see what the governor approves for sports to be played. Um, there is multiple plans in place depending on what happens, but the ultimate plan is to play sports. Uh, what sports get played when and what time, uh, it, it's gonna be up to what the, what the governor allows. So we're just waiting for an announcement from the governor on what we can play. Right now, um, 
tennis and cross country has been approved. Just to add to that, if I could, I know um, I did cheerleading. cheerleading as well, right? Those three. Yeah, forget that. I did speak to our district physician and said if Will was to recommend sports, mm -hmm. what's our position from our, our district physician? And he had, he had related that if it was outside and we were not to use facilities and keep our distance and mask, it's something we he could recommend for. So it's actually on the agenda for the school committee September 8th. So if by then, Will does take a position, we can react to it. It's already on for next Tuesday. In a question about the schedule, is there anything with advisories this year? Will those be utilized and, and how will advisories look? Well, if, if we're not in person, we, we will not be using advisories. If we are allowed to come back, um, in a, if we were in a, well, we talked about a hybrid model. Uh, we were, we're not using advisories because there were just too many kids in one group. So. Right now, we're holding off uh, on advisories. Okay, question to you, Dr. Thornton. Um, uh, you had mentioned earlier about uh, the walkthrough process. Um, what exactly are those? I think some folks are, are asking, are those walkthroughs or are they inspections? They've heard both terminologies used in the past. Um, and if those walkthroughs come back and they say you're safe to go back, well, how does that impact your decision making and probably the decision making of the school? Right, so question one, the form we have in our hand says inspector and inspection. So call it what you want, I'll walk through an inspection. A group of individuals are getting together tomorrow at my basement uh, meeting area. We have a, a kickoff meeting and the four teams go out and they cover the four or five buildings each. Um, each team is led by one of my, my experts and we cover the uh, checklist. Um, I would say that, you know, we have some questions about the checklist, uh, things like, uh, electrical load, uh, things like fire code. But to answer your question, at the end of the day, it's my recommendation to the committee that drives the committee to make their decision. They can modify my thinking, they can uh, they can recommend something else at their level, but um, certainly the walkthroughs will inform my thinking. But to me, at the end of the day, it has to be safe for everyone. If I can believe that it's safe, then I would absolutely want to get it going back as soon as we could. Uh, as it is right now, I don't have that confidence. So if I can't put my children in that situation, I wouldn't put anyone else's. So um, yeah, we'll know more as far as the walkthroughs, they're public documents. So once they are completed, they would be available for the public to see, and uh, we would certainly do that. And um, just to add on to that too, uh, there's a more of a comment than a question, uh, just uh, thanking the uh, team here for all their work in trying to uh, uh, help inform parents on what that distance learning is going to look like. Another comment about uh, thanking for uh, addressing the questions today. And then a third comment about thanking um, all of you uh, for keeping their children safe and doing what's best for the, for the student safety. So a few, uh, few good comments there. Thank you. Uh, report cards. Uh, will they look at any different report cards because it's distance learning versus in-class learning? Will that be noted somehow or will report cards look the same? We haven't changed our grading system, so the report cards will, will look the same. And Dr. Thornton, best guess, will we be back to school in person at some point this year? I would hope so, yes. And a question on, um, which we may not have information on, vaccine. Do we know if vaccines will be mandatory? Will it remain a choice? Uh, what's the thinking on vaccines? I've heard different discussions on that. I do know that our schools are vaccination centers. We already had a, a briefing on that, how we staff our buildings for vaccinations. We know everyone can get a vaccine um, as they uh, process in. There'll be systems to set up and sign up online, or you can come in person and, and fill out the form. The goal is to get everyone vaccinated. Uh, once again, the question of whether or not it's mandated, I think that's an open question right now for the state. And uh, that wraps up our questions that I'm seeing. Um, <clears throat> this link remains live. <clears throat> so if you do have additional questions, you can send those in. Anything we didn't capture today, uh, we'll be um, gathering and making sure that we uh, uh, are able to address those in one way or another. Um, and uh, just to close on a positive note, they just are, uh, we have a couple more folks just thanking everybody for their efforts, and, and it is much appreciated. I can uh, see here from the community. So, and thank you. And um, that's it. <laughs>